A lot is happening regarding human spaceflight as always. Let us start by talking about the fascinating upgrade to SpaceX's Starship, where Elon Musk indicated a 50% boost to this already mighty ship. What impact would that have on Starship's overall performance and our interplanetary future? Hint, a big one. Then, Chinese officials have filed a complaint with the United Nations that a SpaceX Starlink satellite has supposedly nearly hit their Tiangong space station and that Tiangong had to perform a collision avoidance maneuver. They also accuse SpaceX and the US of acting irresponsibly in space. So what is behind all this? Elon Musk of course promptly reacted and he had quite some interesting things to say, which we shall also discuss in detail. Then still on the topic of China, those guys are apparently on fire and they now want to set up a lunar research station already by 2027. Now that is quite a lot sooner than initially planned. So what's behind this suddenly aggressive timeline? There's a lot to talk about so stay tuned. Ok, so let us start directly with SpaceX's behemoth rocket Starship and Super Heavy. Elon already first hinted back in September that, quote, Starship is basically begging for an extra three engines, end quote. People were a bit baffled back then, like, what? Three more Raptors on Starship, like nine total engines? As is sometimes the case when Elon goes on a tweeting rampage, we thought that he had just one of his episodes. But lo and behold, he followed it up by stating this on December 18th, quote, Next booster will have 33 Raptor 2 engines with 13 steering. Ship is being upgraded to 9 engines, bracket, 3 sea level gimbaling, 6 vacuum fixed, close bracket, with increased propellant load, end quote. Bam! I mean, this is insane. So let us just think for a moment what that would actually mean. Now obviously an increased number of engines means more thrust, right? Funny note aside, the total number of engines for Starship and Super Heavy would fittingly be 42, which as we know is the answer to the ultimate question of life and everything. Ok, first we should note that 33 Raptor 2s on Super Heavy is already insane. Not only is 33 compared to 29 engines an increase of 13.8% in number of engines, directly translating into an equal increase in thrust. But nay, we are talking about Raptor 2 engines here that will have 230 metric tons of thrust as compared to Raptor 1's 185 metric tons. So we are looking at another 24.3% increase in thrust per engine. But for Elon that of course isn't enough, so let's just increase the number of engines on Starship to 9 from previously 6. Now you would think that 42 engines in total as compared to previously 35 cannot have such a dramatic impact, right? Well it turns out that the impact is absolutely insane. Starship itself would be stretched by 10% in order to accommodate 25% more propellant, translating to 300 metric tons more liquid oxygen and methane. The lift-off mass of the stretched Starship would now be closer to 1600 metric tons. Nine improved Raptor engines on Starship would give it a thrust of at least 2000 metric tons, possibly up to 2250 metric tons. This would be just slightly less than the thrust of the entire Falcon Heavy. Just think about it for a moment. It doesn't make a lot of sense economically of course, but with these numbers, Starship could be a single stage to orbit vehicle. But add this to the super heavy rocket with 33 improved Raptors and you will not believe how much payload to orbit we are talking here. Previously Starship and Super Heavy were believed to have up to 150 metric tons of payload to orbit of capacity, just slightly more than the almighty legendary Saturn V that had a theoretical maximum of 140 metric tons to low earth orbit. 
but Elon was probably like, nah man, we are building the most powerful rocket of all time and it's only 7% more powerful than a rocket from 50 years ago. So he went full berserk mode, I mean he went full super saiyan god power level 5 trillion and now this upgraded new starship and super heavy would have according to some calculations 220 metric tons of payload capacity to low earth orbit. A guy who calls himself Aeneas, cool name by the way, ran some calculations and published them on Twitter, so no guarantee for absolute correctness, but the numbers look legit. So let me repeat this. According to his calculations, 220 metric tons of payload to low earth orbit her single starship and super heavy launch in full reusable mode, okay? Not like expandable mode, in full reusable mode. This is 46.7% more than the previous starship super heavy variant and a whopping 57% more than the good old Saturn V. Now that is what I call a real generational improvement after 50 years. Ok, ok, but what exactly does that mean now for our interplanetary future? Because that's what we're interested in the most, right? Well, this would have a dramatic impact on how much payload we can carry to the Moon and Mars, obviously. Instead of 100 metric tons, we would now probably be closer to 140 metric tons, which in itself is already crazy nice. But of course, we would need far less tanker refueling launches. With only 5 to 6 tanker launches, we could fully fuel up a classic old regular length Starship version or with 7 stretched tanker launches, we could fully refuel a longer stretched Starship. If the mass increase from the 10% length increase is not so high, SpaceX could stretch all Starship variants, effectively allowing us to colonize the Moon and Mars much faster than with the regular Starship version. So this means that we can build huge Moon and Mars spaces much faster than before. We for example often mentioned that the lunar Starship can itself be used as a Moon base where the ship is laid on the side with a crane and then the propellant tanks are converted into living space. Previously already, one starship offered 1400 cubic meters of living space from the tanks alone. So in total almost 2400 cubic meters of total living space for the astronauts. Now, one stretched starship would offer a whopping 2750 cubic meters of total living space, which quite frankly is insane. So pack a few stretched starships on the Moon or Mars and we already get a giant base with living space for dozens of people per ship. That is why this upgraded starship is a very very big deal and contrary to regular YouTube clickbait headlines where every day something happens that changes everything, this indeed really does change everything. The new stretched starship is really a game changer for our future in space. And please subscribe to our channel here, especially now that we are almost at 50,000 subscribers. We can do it, together we can reach those 50k. Thank you very much in advance for your support. And now to China. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian said at a routine conference on December 28th that China notified the United Nations on December 3rd in form of a document about two quote, close encounters, end quote, this year between SpaceX's Starlink satellites and China's space station Tiangong. The space station then supposedly had to take evasive maneuvers on July 1st and October 21st to avoid collisions with the satellites. This was widely shown on China's propaganda, uh, I mean, sorry, I meant on China's state media CCTV, where a news anchor said that, quote, the United States is bringing its double standards into outer space. The US government also bears a responsibility. They have caused severe threat to the lives and safety of other countries' astronauts." End quote. 
Of course, this created quite some outrage with people reacting by calling to boycott Tesla on Chinese social media. So what is behind this? Well, we know that China and the USA are, whether we want it or not, already engaged in a fierce competition or in a Cold War 2.0-like situation. And China has been often accused by the US and actually other Western countries of acting irresponsibly with their rocket launches. For example, only in May 2021, a launch from a Chinese Long March 5B rocket caused debris from that rocket to fall into the Indian Ocean not far from populated islands. In 2020, a similar situation where debris from a Chinese Long March 5B fell on the Ivory Coast, so on land, even damaging some buildings. Luckily, nobody was injured or killed. So I personally think that this is the classic blame game. China was blamed for being irresponsible, which in that case is absolutely 100% true. They really were and are irresponsible with their rocket launches. And now of course they also want to blame the US. Unfortunately now Elon Musk is caught between the front lines with Starlink. Now we don't know if the near collision incident really took place and if it did, you can be sure that it has been painted in a quite exaggerated light. The ISS, for example, never reported a dangerous situation with the Starlink satellites. So, you know, just saying exaggeration might certainly be involved here. It will be interesting to see if this really will have an impact on sales of Tesla in China. Of course, China wants to push their own domestic electric car companies, so this is a convenient excuse to drag Elon Musk and Tesla into the dirt. Elon responded to the incident that, quote, tens of billions, end quote, of satellites could be accommodated in low Earth orbit without problems. He said more precisely that, quote, space is extremely enormous and satellites are very tiny. This is not some situation where we are effectively blocking others in any way. We've not blocked anyone from doing anything, nor do we expect to. A couple of thousand satellites is nothing. It's like, hey, here's a couple of thousand of cars on Earth. It's nothing, end quote. Well, this might be true to some extent, but it is also true that the more cluttered low Earth orbit will become, the more collision avoidance will play a role. And it can be done automatically without human intervention. But still, the more packed low Earth orbit will be, with tens of thousands of satellites like Starlink, the higher the probability for collisions. But nothing that can't be solved. Also, what is quite hilarious in all this, China left out the small, very tiny detail that they themselves are also planning to launch a satellite constellation with 13,000 satellites. You know, double standards, anyone? Well, it's just sad that Elon Musk and his companies are now in the crossfire of the Chinese government, but this doesn't come as a surprise. We all saw it coming, right? And maybe in some parts as a reaction to all this, China is speeding up plans to deploy a lunar research station to the moon already by 2027. In previous videos, we talked about how China will already have its new upgraded Long March 5 moon rocket ready by 2026. But now Wu Yanhua, deputy director of the China National Space Administration CNSA, said that the Chang'e 8 moon mission will now land a nuclear-powered research station on the moon. For that purpose, China is already developing a 1 megawatt nuclear space-grade reactor, which is 10 times more powerful than similar devices planned by NASA. We assume that the Lunar Research Station will be some kind of habitat shelter, where Taikonauts will be able to stay for extended periods of time. Zhang Zhongfen, the deputy chief designer of China's manned space program, detailed these plans. According to him, China also wants to deploy a mobile station, so basically a pressurized moon rover of some sort, which will be able to roam on the surface of the moon for over 1000 kilometers, and that will use some form of AI, so Taikonauts will not be needed to steer it, but if need arises, they can still enter the mobile laboratory and drive around on the lunar surface. The mobile lab would also allow China and their allies, so basically only Russia, 
to circumvent the, as Zhang puts it, territorial claims of the USA. By that he means the Artemis Accords, of which China and Russia are not a part. Unlike the Artemis program, the Chinese want to focus on the exploration of lunar caves, which could provide the ideal environment for the construction of permanent settlements. So wow, this could be an interesting situation on the moon in the later decade and the next decades. Imagine the Chinese building huge underground bases in lunar lava tubes, whereas the US and other Western countries would use overground bases enabled by the SpaceX Lunar Starship. Fascinating times indeed, and even though it's some kind of Cold War 2.0 space race, at least it leads to a massive acceleration of humanity's presence in space as a positive side effect. Well, that was quite fascinating stuff this time. We hope you enjoyed this video. The future will be absolutely insane and we wish you already a good slide into the next year. All the best from our team and on to the future.